For question time, we, knew, we now move to First Minister's questions. Question number one, John Lamont. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. To ask the First Minister what engagements he has planned for the rest of the day. First Minister. Uh, taking forward matters of importance to the people of Scotland. John Lamont. Presiding Officer, these are tough times. People across Europe are fearful of what is going to happen if Greece defaults on its loans and leaves the Eurozone. The situation in Spain, Portugal and Italy is also looking increasingly perilous. If Greece leaves the Euro and others may follow, what are the First Minister's estimates of the impact on the Scottish economy? First Minister. Well, of course, it's precisely because of the seriousness of the situation that we've identified government time next week uh, for a debate on exactly that subject. And the government will uh, contribute our thoughts on the matter. I'm sure the Labour Party and other parties will contribute as well. Clearly, it's a very serious uh, uh, situation and a potentially very substantial implications for the UK and for the Scottish economy. Joanne Lamont. It would have been good if the First Minister could maybe have shared some of the, his thoughts now, since that was the question I asked him. The last time our banking sector hit crisis, a Labour government immediately rescued our banks so that ordinary families in this country could still get money out of their cash points. <laughs> including Scottish banks, of course. No question, no hesitation, no negotiation. The kind of action, the kind of action the Greeks and the Irish can only dream of. Our banking system, saved by one of the most successful economic unions in history, the United Kingdom. Is it the real lesson of the Euro crisis that you cannot share a currency, you cannot have monetary union without a fiscal union and a political union? First Minister. Well, uh, can, I, can I gently remind Joan Lamont that uh, the Governor of the Bank of England was in office during the period she talks about. Uh, last week he published the most devastating assessment of the delay and dithering and in fact accused the last government's lack of action as being responsible for the depth of the recession. Now if that's what the Governor of the Bank of England, who was in office when Alistair Darling was Chancellor and Gordon Brown was Prime Minister, uh, says, then I, I don't think I have to add to that by pointing out that Labour's absolute responsibility for the debt for the recession is clear on the record cannot be escaped by any member of the Labour Party. She says that a monetary union is inevitable to have carry with it a fiscal union. There's two totally different situations. We're talking in the Euro about a situation where the productivity rates of Greece are about 40 per cent below that of Germany. That creates huge uh, difficulties and tensions within the Euro area. Uh, and I think it, it would actually be better at this particular juncture uh, if people came forward with positive ideas as to, how to give, as to how to give an opportunity and hope for the people of Greece within that Euro area merely than capping from the sidelines, which is what seems to be done by the United Kingdom government. And I haven't, to be absolutely frank, heard anything from Ed Balls, which gives a substantial argument as to how the Eurozone can be maintained in its current condition. So I hope when we come to the debate next Wednesday, Joanne Lamont will come not just with a bit of, uh, a bit of remembrance of the past and Labour's absolute responsibility for the mess this economy was in, but also some positive ideas for the future. This, of course, is the man who said that the problem with the banking system was that it was over-regulated. <laughs> but we also, note, we also note that he refuses to confront the logic of his own position that the Bank of England would be the lender of last resort for a Scotland that was outside the United Kingdom. People in this country, people all around Europe, are looking for certainty and stability in an uncertain world. The First Minister used to say we needed a Scottish pound because interest rates set in London were bad for Scotland. Yet now that's what he advocates. He used to say we joined the euro because the pound was failing. Now, louder than William Hague ever did, he's saying keep the pound. I guess, you know, consistency is a wonderful thing. Is it the real reason? The real reason is it the real reason the First Minister keeps changing the economic case for leaving the UK is because he can't find one that adds up. Yeah. First Minister. 
When I heard the words consistency is a wonderful thing, the three words council tax freeze came to mind <laughs> as far as the Labour Party concerned. Uh, can I just point out that Gordon Brown, the former Labour Prime Minister, actually argued that there should be no touch regulation of the financial sector in a speech. He actually argued that position. The Labour Party were in favour of entering the Euro. We're going to have a referendum when Tony Blair was Prime Minister to consolidate that position. So I really think lectures on economic consistency with regard to the Euro area coming from the Labour Party it absolutely takes the biscuits in terms of this, of this chamber. I think it will be of huge substantial assistance to the Scottish economy if we have fiscal control, that is we control the taxes and resources of Scotland and have the ability to manage our economy on that basis. That is a, a strong position that independence will give us and no other option seems to be available that could offer that position. For example, I would have thought right now there is, despite the Alistair Darling's position of wanting cuts that were tougher and deeper than those of Margaret Thatcher, I thought there would be agreement now between the SNP and the Labour Party that direct capital spending is necessary to revive our economy at the present moment. And we have been articulating that case along with our Labour colleagues in the Government of Wales trying to convince the Chancellor in London that that is the right mechanism to do right now to revive this economy. Wouldn't it be better if we as a parliament could just decide to get on and do it yes. with independence yes. instead of having to go cap in hand yes. to UK Tory yes. Chancellor? Joanne Lamont. Order, Joanne Lamont. You know, instead of the First Minister giving us his greatest hits in lines of not answering the question, he should take responsibility and reflect on what is happening in Europe, Europe just now, what consequences it will have for Scotland. The reality is, now, the fact of the matter is, we have all heard that the First Minister is planning a big day out of the pictures tomorrow. For many of us, for many of us, the cinema is a form of escapism. But for, evidently, for the First Minister, his economics is escapism. Europe is facing the greatest economic crisis since the Depression. And instead of looking up his address book under E for Economists, he's looking up C for Celebrities. Makes a change, I suppose, from dialing M for Murdoch. Scots, like people across Europe, this is a serious business. Scots, 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 like people across Europe, fear what's going to happen to them if the Eurozone collapses. But the First Minister's message to them is, turn off the news, put down the paper, nothing to worry about. I think we know now what will be showing at the multiplex at Fountain Bridge tomorrow. Alex in Wonderland. First Minister. Order. Well, I, First I, 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 Order. I just hope by the, the time John First Lamont Minister. gets to the debate next Wednesday called in government time so this parliament can address seriously a hugely serious issue, she's got something more to say than she's managed this afternoon. Yeah. The economy is a huge abiding concern for this government. That's why we work day and daily to bring jobs to Scotland. We take some satisfaction in recent employment figures rising in Scotland and unemployment figures falling, but we take no complacency in that, which is why we're calling for the direct investment in the shovel-ready projects around Scotland and why we make the case for having control over the fiscal levers of this economy, which can only now come with independence. But I have to say, the idea that we are the only party planning and and getting arrangements made for a constitutional debate seems to me rather wide of the mark. Yeah, because I read in the mail on Sunday, the first time I'd ever read that newspaper, <laughs> that senior aides to David Cameron took part in a secret all-party council of war at former Labour Chancellor's Alistair Darling's Edinburgh home. The six men spent three hours discussing their battle plans at the meeting held a month ago at Mr Darling's home at Abbotsford Park area that has become their unofficial headquarter. Fortified by tea and sandwiches, they agreed <laughs> that they agreed that the only way to defeat I Mr I think we get the gist, First Minister. Could you just get to that answer?
It was described as the Abbots for the Corn. If that's what the No campaign have got to offer, then the campaign launch tomorrow will be fundamentally successful.